Today let's solve an issue with your GE front load washing machine not draining water, which will also cause the washing machine not to spin. I have about five or six ideas, and let's try each of them to hopefully fix the issue with your washing machine. First, let's go with the easiest ones. Check your drain hose. Does it fit into your standpipe well? Make sure that the drain hose isn't stuck too far down into your standpipe. The reason is if it goes down too far into the standpipe, it could cause water siphoning and backflow issues, which will trick the washing machine into thinking that it can't drain well or that it's draining too fast. Additionally, make sure that your water drain hose does not have any kinks or binds in it or damage. I've seen a few situations where the hose was pinched, causing water to not drain well, even though everything else was seemingly fine. Once you have everything taken care of with the drain hose, let's look at the washer pump filter. At the bottom of this style GE washer, there's a housing that can be opened from the top Remove the housing and you can pull a plastic tray down, revealing a blue release knob. You will absolutely need to place a bath towel or plastic tray down, depending on how much room you have in the situation. Slowly turn the knob counterclockwise. Eventually water will begin to flow out of the pump housing, but it can be controlled from the release knob, so use that to your advantage to start and stop the water, taking care of it as it comes out. Once it is all flowed out and you don't get any additional water, you can pull out and inspect the filter area. Now, if you find debris or gunk here or any manner of things, it's likely that this is the culprit issue causing all of your problems. I didn't record it when we first bought the washing machine, but that was the exact problem this washer had. I paid $100 to buy this $1,300 GE washer just because there's junk in the pump housing. We had it fixed actually in about five minutes. Make sure that the housing and filter are totally cleansed and cleaned before reinserting the filter and putting the plate back into place. Try the washer now that it's cleaned out and see if this solved your issue. Now, if none of these things solved your issue, it's possible that the obstructions burnt the drain motor out or there's some other deeper problem with the system that will require us to take the machine apart. So let's go ahead and take the front panel off and remove the drain motor and inspect. To start, we need to locate the dispenser drawer and pull it all the way out. Press on the tab to unlock the drawer in the rear of the dispenser and pull it all the way out. Note that this kind of dispenser drawer is very, very deep. In the dispenser drawer, there are five screws to hold the front interface on. Each of these need removed, preferably with a magnetic tipped screwdriver. Because one of the most problematic things I encountered with this initial part was that the two middle screws on left and right have a very bad habit of re-threading back into the dispenser housing. You'll either need to use a dental pick or pull forward on the housing to force and remove the screws that need to fully vacate from the housing before disassembly. Otherwise, you're going to try to remove the console without realizing these screws are still in and like to reseat themselves during this process. Once the screws have been removed, pull up on the console slightly on the left side, then push the console to the right, and this will fully dislodge the console from the washing machine. Once you have that done, it will expose the three top screws from the top of the panel of the washer. You'll need to remove these small screws to pull the panel forward and then away from the washer, giving you access to the whole top of the machine. The wires on the interface console are very, very short, and you only get limited access to remove the console unless you use needle nose pliers and remove the wire ties, or you remove the harness to the console and interface itself. Depending on your goal with the machine, you can remove the front bulkhead without removing the console itself, saving you time. To start removing the bulkhead, you need to remove the outer door spring with a screwdriver and peel the door boot away from the washer bulkhead. Now, the bulkhead here is very sharp, so make sure to be pretty careful when separating the boot from the washer. To continue with the door, there are two screws that need removed from the door locks plastic facade on the right. Once you get these two screws off and remove the facade, there are two more screws underneath that hold the door lock itself into place. When you get these two screws removed, you can pull up on the tab of the door lock and this will allow you to remove the lock from the bulkhead. Alternatively, you could put your hand into the door boot seal and remove the wires from the door lock if by some reason you needed to replace the lock itself without taking off the front of the washer entirely. To remove the front bulkhead, there are approximately nine screws on the front of the bulkhead that need removed. Seven of these screws are on the top of the bulkhead and then one on each side where the panel is near the dispenser and the lower right side of the console. There are also three screws underneath the washing machine on the front 
that could require you to tilt the washing machine slightly backward to remove. Now note this is a very, very heavy washing machine, so you need to use a lot of caution if you tilt the washing machine and use something to arrest it when it is up. On the screws for the bulkhead itself, the three middle screws are related to the air baffle system. When they are removed, you need to move the retention slots on the baffle to remove the system from the bulkhead itself. When you have every single one of these screws removed, you're going to need to pull up on the bulkhead, then forward towards you away from the washing machine housing. But don't pull too hard yet, because there's a hidden wire that needs to be removed from the door wire harness on the left side of the unit. Once you have this harness fully removed, just simply pull the door forward and you are essentially done with the bulkhead removal. With the bulkhead off, we want to go to the bottom of the washing machine and in the lower right corner we can access the pump. Make sure that the washing machine has been fully drained of water using the same technique we had earlier in the video. Once drained, let's take off both hoses going to the pump. I seemingly lost early footage of taking off the first black hose on the left but you want to use a pair of slip jawed pliers to press the clamps together and push them towards the back of the rubber hose to the rear of the washer. Then remove the hoses from the housing itself, one at a time. Note that the black left hose will have an alignment notch on the top that will orient the hose properly when you reinstall it. When the hoses come off, you probably will get some water coming out of these hoses despite draining the pump. This happened to me, so be cautious to have a towel on hand and you'll do the same steps for the right hose as well. With the hoses separated, there are two screws that hold the pump on the bottom of the washer from the top. You will need a short screwdriver to remove these screws from the housing, and you either should have an inspection mirror or use your fingers really well to feel for the screw heads and gently remove them. I didn't find this as hard as reinstalling them though, honestly. Once the screws are out, you can remove the pump from the housing. Note the plastic tabs and the rubber grommets at the front of the machine. You'll need to identify these when you reinstall the pump. Additionally, either before you pull out the pump or just before that, there's a wire harness on the right side of the pump that needs pulled out before the pump can fully be removed from this washer. With everything disconnected, removing the pump is a tight fit. For me, I felt like moving the washer pump to the left side of the machine gave me more room to pull it out of the machine and maneuver it around. But your results may vary. It's not too hard to get out though. Once you have it out, you can get the new pump ready and reinstall the new one. While we're down here replacing the pump, another consideration is to inspect the rubber hoses that you pulled out and look for debris that could be lodged in the hoses, causing restriction or no flow to the hose system. You would need a flashlight and patience to look at the hoses to see if there's any sort of obstructions that would prevent the pump from working properly. The first thing that you want to do is connect the wires to the pump because you'll have more room to attach the pump when you need to fit it in. Then you need to install the screws. This took a bit of time for me because I was essentially doing it blind as I did not have an inspection mirror. Pay attention to the plastic tabs and the rubber grommet as you want to align the pump with these and push the washer pump housing as far forward as you can, which should allow you to thread the screws into the pump. I found that using one hand to press the pump forward and the other hand threading the screws worked the best because you can feel for the threaded opening the screws will go into. This took the longest time of the entire process of this video to install the pump. Once the screws are tightened, you'll reinstall the rubber hoses, making sure that the notches on the black hose are in their proper place. Use your slip jawed pliers, and it shouldn't be too hard at this point. When that's been completed, we're in the home stretch as it's now time to put the front bulkhead back on and the console together to run the machine and see if this solved your problem. Once you've completed whatever task you have in the washing machine, let's go ahead and reinstall the bulkhead. First, you want to make sure that the left side wire harness hidden behind the bulkhead is reinstalled properly before you try to do anything with the door. You could potentially access this after the bulkhead installation by putting your hand through the gasket. Once you have that done, the bulkhead will need lifted up above the washer chassis itself, then pressed or dropped into place because there are plastic mounts on the bulkhead housing itself. I found that getting it slotted into place wasn't too hard compared to other washing machines though. Once the bulkhead has been lifted into place, you're going to need to begin the process of reinstalling all the screws, and of course there are about 10 to 12 on this. I do suggest when you install the screws to go in the order of the outside where the console panel is on the left and right and work your way inwards. 
you're going to need to use your hands to route the blower fan that's mounted on the door boot gasket into place on the bulkhead in these slots. Then you'll add the three screws to that assembly and then the rest of the screws all together on the bottom and the top where the console is. Next, install the washer door latch back into place. You can use your hand and stick it into the latch assembly through the gasket. The key is making sure that the latch is pressed into place before adding the two screws that secure the latch. Once you have the latch installed with screws, reinstall the front plate with the next two screws. Next, slowly fit the door boot seal against the bulkhead. There is a very thin piece of metal that the gasket will channel onto in this area and kind of lock or fit well into place. If you have any trouble meshing the gasket and the metal housing, you can always use a little bit of soap on the gasket to make sure it applies better. Once you get this done, you'll need to install the door boot spring. My regular spring tool that I would use did not work because this spring was huge. So I used a wrench and zip ties and I have a video on how to do this if you don't have any installation tools. The top lid of the washer now needs reinstalled before the console interface does. So you'll use the three screws to lock the lid back in place. Next, you want to reinstall the console back into place. There are two large flat head screws on the right side of the washer. The control panel is going to need locked into these two screws from when the panel was reinstalled, so be mindful of this. Essentially, you're going to use the bottom right screw to pivot and drop the console down into place. Once you have it dropped into place, it will kind of snap slightly. Then you'll need to press the console to the left to fully lock it and secure it in place. This could take you a few attempts. I managed to get the console back to where it needed to be, fully installed in 30 seconds. Just be mindful of where the screws are on the console's right side. When the console snapped into place, you just need to reinstall the five screws to the dispenser housing. Note that two of the screws that you took out earlier are larger than the others. These two screws go into the middle screw holes on the left and right side, and they mate the dispenser to the console interface. I found that the dispenser in doing this kept trying to back itself out of me installing the screws. So I had to hold the dispenser with one hand, secure it to the front of the console, and then install the screws. The last step, finally, is to install the dispenser by just inserting it back into the slot and ensure that the tab locks into place at the back. Now, if none of these tips helped you, there are a few other things that you can do, but it's almost always going to look at the pump in some form or fashion. One consideration is to get into the diagnostic system and look at codes forcing the pump to run or attempt to run. This process can be done in tandem with a multimeter to check voltage on the board to see if the control board is sending proper voltage to the drain pump. Now, if it wasn't sending the right voltage to the pump, there's a good possibility the board is bad or the connection from the board to the pump is bad or insecure. But now that since we're basically at the end of the video, one thing you wanna look at is my troubleshooting video for error codes for this exact washer and how to look through all those systems as well as doing the force tests. This should give you a nice toolbox to hunt down all the problems that could happen with a unit not draining, and I hope this helps you. Have a great day and subscribe for more GE content.